Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's fuselage. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. We'll start with an overview of the Lancaster's fuselage. The fuselage is divided into five sections. That is the nose, front centre portion, intermediate centre portion, rear centre portion and the rear fuselage. For transport purposes only four sections are used, the nose and front centre portion being bolted together to form the front end. The nose houses the front gun turret and bomb aiming station and the front centre portion contains the pilots, flight engineers, navigators and wireless operators stations. The intermediate centre portion serves as a rest compartment and the rear centre portion houses the operational equipment and mid turrets. The rear fuselage carries the tail unit and the rear turret. The fuselage is of light alloy monocoque construction, built up with transverse channel section formers, stiffened by four and a half channel stringers. The framework is covered with light alloy sheet riveted to the formers and stringers with countersunk head rivets. The stringers are secured to the formers by small attachment brackets, the formers being cut away to allow the stringers to pass through. Between formers E and 22, that is the length of the bomb compartment, the fuselage section excluding the bomb doors is constant. From former 22 aft, the fuselage tapers slightly in plan and elevation. The fuselage formers are numbered 1 to 41, proceeding aft from the first complete former in the front centre portion, and lettered A to K, excluding letter I, proceeding forward from that point. Along the sides of the bomb compartment, formers 1, 6, 9, 12 and 18 are of pressed steel. In the nose of the Lancaster, the formers at the rear of the section are complete, but at the front, the tops of the formers are cut away to receive the front gun turret mounting ring. Brackets riveted on these formers carry the ring which is also supported by a channel member running across the fuselage. Between this member and former G is a draft screen which is curved to suit the gun turret contour. The hemispherical transparent nose is mounted on brackets secured to the front former. K. Rubber pads being fitted between the brackets and the transparent material. In the floor of the nose, channel section intercostals form the opening for the parachute exit door, which consists of a wooden framework covered top and bottom with light alloy sheet. It has mounted on it the bomb aimer's kneeling cushions and is located in the floor structure by two pegs at the rear end and a spring-loaded bolt at the front end. This bolt is operated by a pull on a ring, to which it is connected by a cable. The ring is located beneath the cushions, which lift up for this purpose. Two rectangular windows in the fuselage are provided at the bomb aiming station. On the port side of the floor, at the rear of the nose portion, is a circular window for vertical photography. The front centre portion is the part of the fuselage between the front spar and former E. An extruded member runs the full length of the section on each side and carries the transverse channel section floor members, which, with the channel section intercostals, form the framework of the floor. The covering of the floor is light alloy sheet on the top side only. 
The floor cross members coincide with the fuselage formers to which they are attached. Below the floor, the formers together with an extruded channel section form the sides of the bomb compartment to which the bomb doors are hinged. The formers above the floor form the main cabin and are hoop shaped except where they are cut away over the pilot's cockpit. Along the top of the latter formers on each side runs the cockpit rail, an inverted U member. Formers 1, 2, 3 and 4 have steel plates fitted to the top on the port side to give additional protection to the pilot. The extreme front and rear formers of the front section, portion E and 6 respectively, are angle members which form the joints to the other sections and a bulkhead below the floor level at former E acts as a forward end of the bomb compartment. Three bomb gear housings are fitted between bomb beams B and C and three between beams 3 and 4 in the main floor. Each of these latter beams is supported for the carriage of heavy bombs by a vertical tie rod bolted at the lower end to the beam near the centre line of the fuselage and at the upper end to the top of the fuselage former which is locally reinforced. Cross channels are fitted between the bomb beams and are braced together by light alloy intercostals. In early Lancasters floor beam 5A is not fitted but beams 2 and 5 are reinforced. The pilot's floor is a raised platform on the port side in the front of the cockpit, built of four and half channel members with intercostals between, and covered with light alloy sheet on both upper and lower surfaces. On the port side, it is attached to the formers, and on the starboard side, it is supported from the main floor on a braced frame of channel members. The intermediate centre portion of the fuselage is built on the front and rear spars of the main plane. The section is uniform throughout and of similar construction to the front centre portion except that the floor is deeper and the construction of the front and rear formers are different. These formers are constructed of two angles riveted to an extension of the spar web to form a channel section. An emergency exit is fitted in the centre of the roof and windows are provided in the sides. At former 7, an armoured bulkhead is provided consisting of a frame and two doors hung on a central post. This post also serves the purpose of a tie rod supporting the main floor in the vicinity of the bomb gear housings. Plywood panels fill the gap below the armour in order to enclose the heated front cabin. The floor is fitted with three bomb gear housings between bomb beams 8 and 9. The two outer housings are the standard type to carry 500 pound bombs, whilst the centre housing contains an RAE heavy bomb slip unit to carry a 4,000 pound bomb. In early Lancasters, a top hat section stiffener is fitted above the floor at floor beam 11 but in later aircraft this is replaced by an additional floor beam 11A. The rear centre portion comprises that portion of the fuselage after the rear spar and up to former 27. The bomb compartment ends at former 22 and after this the fuselage tapers in plan and elevation. The construction up to former 22 is similar to that of the front centre portion. The section of former 22 below the main floor is formed into a bulkhead for the end of the bomb compartment. Six bomb gear housings are fitted into the floor, three between bomb beams 13 and 14 and three between beams 18 and 19. The three housings between beams 13 and 14 are strengthened in a similar manner to those between beams 3 and 4 in the front centre portion. 
In the top of the fuselage, the mid-upper turret is mounted in a support ring between Formers 24 and 26. Formers 24, 25 and 26 are cut away at the supporting frame. Detachable fairings are mounted forward and aft of the turret. The mid-lower turret, if fitted, is mounted in a wooden support ring between Formers 24 and 27. Formers 25 and 26 being cut away at the support ring. An emergency exit is fitted in the roof above the end of the main floor and seven windows are fitted in each side of the fuselage. The reconnaissance flare chute is mounted on the centre line of the aeroplane immediately after the bomb compartment and the removable flare chute extension is stowed on the starboard side forward of the ammunition ducts and boxes. The rear fuselage, which is the portion after former 27, is constructed in a similar manner to the rear end of the rear centre portion. The fuselage ends at former 41, and from this a tubular framework projects to support the rear gun turret mounting ring. A detachable fairing fits under this framework and forms the tail of the fuselage below the turret. Where the tailplane enters the section between formers 35 and 38, the skin, formers and stringers are cut away. Below this, in the centre of the floor, is fitted the tailwheel mounting beam, which is a built-up structure and houses the tailwheel shock absorber strut. Between formers 29 and 31 on the starboard side is placed the main entrance door. Hinged on the leading edge and opening inwards and built up from wooden members covered on both sides with plywood. A rubber retaining spring is provided to hold the door open. A wooden walkway is provided over the tailplane and down to the rear turret which is separated from the main cabin by a pair of wooden draft proof doors. Four windows are fitted in the rear fuselage, three on the port side and one on the starboard side. Provision is made at the bottom of former 41 for the attachment of a target towing gear bracket. The bomb doors, one on each side of the fuselage, enclose the 33 foot long bomb compartment and form the lower surface of the fuselage between formers E and 22. They are of light alloy construction built up from a central spar with nose and main ribs tapering in each direction and with special hinge and edge extruded channels. The spar is made up with T-section extruded flanges connected by a sheet web having flange lightning holes. The main ribs, nose ribs and the special end ribs are pressings, flange for the attachment of the inner and outer skins of light alloy sheet. The hydraulic jack attachment at each end consists of a trunnion mounted in ball bearings between the two special end ribs. Each door has seven ball bearing hinges, one central datum hinge, four intermediate hinges and two end hinges all attached to the hinge beam at the bottom of the sides of the bomb compartment. Between the hinges is a curved sealing strip which maintains the seal as the doors move. To seal the joint between the doors when closed, a spruce strip is attached to the projecting flange on the edge channel of the port door and a brush sealing strip similarly attached to the starboard door. After the bomb doors, a wood framed fairing of light alloy sheet is attached below the fuselage to complete the contour. Openings for the flare chutes are provided in this fairing. Above the cutaway portion of the front centre portion and over almost all the roof is the transparent canopy. The support for this comprises a die cast windscreen frame 
to which is bolted a welded steel tubular structure, extending aft to form a one. The remaining portion of the frame is built up of spruce and fares into a hemispherical dome just forward of the end of the section. An inward opening direct vision window is fitted in each side of the windscreen and each side of the canopy at the forward end is a sliding window. In the panel forward of Former 1 is an observation dome. The pilot seat is a box type seat with a back built up from channel members. It is mounted in a tubular underframe and is adjustable in height. The adjustment is made by means of a lever at the pilot's left hand side, which turns the short levers on the ends of which the seat is mounted. A stud on the hand lever engages with a notched quadrant on the underframe and locks the seat in the required position. The stud can be released by pressing a spring-loaded button on the end of the lever. Armour plating is fitted on the back of the seat and above the seat behind the pilot's head. This latter plate is hinged to allow it to be folded down behind the seat. The flight engineer's seat is a folding structure supported on the starboard side of the fuselage. The seat itself is built on a plywood base padded with sponge rubber. The base is stiffened by two inverted U-section members onto which two bearer tubes are welded. A support frame at the outer edge of the seat holds the seat in a horizontal position. And when the seat is folded vertically upwards, this frame slides in a slot in the seat support members. The backrest for the seat is a strap of canvas webbing, bolted to an eye bolt on the cockpit rail and to the flight engineer's seat. The attachment of the flight engineer's seat is detachable, so that when the seat is in the stowed position, the backrest can be folded down the back of the seat. The navigator's seat is supported on a pivoted arm of welded tubes, mounted on the aft leg of the table. It can also revolve on its attachment to the arm. The pivoted arm can be locked in any position by means of a hand screw which tightens the upper collar. When not in use, the seat is turned under the table. Its movement is limited by a check cable attached to the floor by a quick release catch to facilitate access to the radio power units. The wireless operator's seat is mounted at the front of the front spar cover. It is a box type seat built up with light alloy flange U-section stiffeners and skin. The seat is supported on a frame of welded steel tubes bolted to the main floor. The rest seat is formed by the top of the oxygen bottle crate and a backrest mounted on the rear spar. The base of the seat forms a lid on the oxygen crate to which it is attached by six hinges. Check cables prevent the lid from being opened too far. The backrest is built up on a spruce frame with a plywood base. It is secured to the top of the rear spar by two hinge brackets and is supported by a centre tube clamped to a cross tube bolted between former 12 and the floor support tube at that point. Adjustment to the backrest is possible by releasing the clamp on the cross tube. The centre support tube being then free to slide through the clamp. The navigator's table is attached to formers A, 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the port side, the inner edge being supported on two tubeless stays. The top is of plywood with an upper surface of langite and is strengthened by two wooden stiffeners and two radio grate bearer rails. A large drawer with a letdown front is fitted into the side of the table. The aft end of the table, which carries the radio apparatus, projects and is supported from the top of Former 3 by tubular members. At this end of the table is a hinged flap, 
which can be folded to gain access to a second drawer in the end. Below the table, a crate is provided for the accumulator batteries, supported in runners. A curtain is provided for fixing at the forward end of the table, in order to prevent glare in the cockpit. It is attached to the edge of the table and to form a one, by lift the dot fasteners, and when not in use is rolled up and stowed in the tube below the forward edge of the table. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell, remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.